my name is Alana Kappist. I am currently a veterinarian and that's a lot of who I am as a person. I live in Hawaii with my husband and our three dogs and love life out there, but when it came to decision making for surgery and medical care, my whole medical team has been in Boston since I was a child and um, I basically grew up through adolescence with Dr. Tung's help and uh, I, there was no doubt that I was going to keep coming back to Boston for all my medical care. I see individuals who themselves have cancer or family members have cancer. My mother was in her 30s. Her sister, uh, Melanie, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at age 30 and passed away from ovarian cancer by the time she was 34. My mom uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer right around the time that Melanie was in final stages of, of ovarian cancer. And then 13 years later, she was diagnosed with a separate round of breast cancer. And then five years after that, another round of breast cancer. In families such as Alana's, it's clear that there is a hereditary risk. My grandfather was tested was positive for BRCA1 gene, and my mom was then tested. My mom was positive. Towards the end of my college career, I, I did get tested, and, and it came back positive. I went from not knowing and feeling okay, but this feeling of inevitability of cancer or, or something happening in my life to having Dr. Tung create this plan with me. The counseling is extremely important to individualize care for each woman who carries a BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutation. I think a woman shouldn't go this alone. Well, Alana, she had as high as a 90% chance of developing breast cancer. She also inherited up to about a 50% chance of developing ovarian cancer. What we want women to know is that if they do test positive for the gene, we do feel that they need to have their ovaries removed when the time is appropriate. But the decision about preventative mastectomies is an individual one, and it's different for each woman, and that we will help them make the right decision for them. Since my maternal aunt was diagnosed at 30, which was young, they wanted me to be thinking oophorectomy by the time I was 30, which it was very hard for me to swallow initially because the reality was I was not on fast kind of mom track. Dr. Tung helped weigh the risks for me and it was pretty clear that if I was willing to go through the oophorectomy that it truly was what was best for me. But we didn't want her to lose the opportunity to have biologic children. I was able to go through two successful rounds of IVF before having the oophorectomy. That brought me to uh, this past January, and I came back and, and met with Dr. Tung again, and she sat me down and she looked at me and she said, you're a little late with your MRI. They do have to watch very closely. We ask them to get screening every six months with mammograms and MRIs. I was sitting waiting for my results for both of them, and I felt like it was taking too long to get my results, and I kept thinking that that's it, this is it. This is when I'm getting my cancer diagnosis and it's my fault, I waited too long. And then when I got the clear results from the MRI and the mammogram, I said, we're scheduling it. I'm not waiting any longer. I think for her, having watched her mother go through breast cancer three times and knowing that it occurred so young, for Alana, it was a very logical and good decision uh, to undergo the preventative mastectomies. I had this feeling of inevitability with the cancer that's now gone. And I didn't believe it until I had my pathology reports handed to me. <laughs> and when I physically held the paper that said that everything that came out was clean, that's when I believed it. My husband was in the room and I just remember looking at him and saying, this is it, you know, this is why we did all of this. Um, And it was, uh, you know, at that moment it became clear that it was a good decision. The risk that is left is really single digits, maybe two or three percent chance of developing breast cancer compared to the 90 percent risk that she had before the surgery. I mean, I just remember walking on the golf course thinking how lucky I was. And, you know, it's just a bizarre thing for someone to have gone through a mastectomy and then to be contemplating how lucky they are. But I know there's people who 
or on their day-to-day -day lives that don't know what their risk factors are. Just being able to identify who in the family is at risk and who is not at risk is an enormous achievement and it's, a, and it's progress because Alana's mother and Alana's aunt were blindsided. They didn't know cancer was coming, but for Alana, she knew that she was at risk for these cancers, and that did put us in the driver's seat. I think that the reality is moving forward, I'm gonna get to, to not think about cancer, to not think about impending doom or impending diagnosis of cancer, and, and to really uh, just appreciate life.